We rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel reading for this Easter Sunday is from St. Matthew chapter 28. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Behold, he is going before you in Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For over a millennia, this has been the church's triumphant cry on Easter Sunday. We do not mourn the fact that Jesus died. No, we rejoice that he was raised from the dead that he lives and that he reigns as the victorious savior of humankind. In three days, we've gone from recalling the horrific walk of suffering and shame as Jesus carried his cross to Calvary, from mentally watching as the soldiers nailed his hands and his feet to the wood, hearing his cries of agony, his prayers for us, his last gasp, and now this great day of joy from the valley of death to the summit of heaven. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, while each of the gospel accounts record the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death and the tomb, they focus on different aspects about it. So, Mark, for instance, mentions three women instead of the two Matthew list, noting that it was Mary Magdalene who went to the disciples who wouldn't believe her story. Luke initially speaks of women and then adds a new name to the list, telling us that the whole group went off to tell the disciples. John only speaks of Mary Magdalene going to the tomb, then running back to tell Peter and John and the others Jesus' body was missing from the tomb. And after they returned to the tomb, Peter and John could only shake their heads in wonder and then go home. And while Mary remained there weeping, Jesus revealed himself to her before he eventually appeared to the disciples later that evening, something recorded by Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels, while differing in some details, all agree on the facts of Christ's resurrection from the dead. The women, singularly or in mass, tell the disciples about what they saw. It's Matthew who records that Jesus is the one who told them, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The resurrection of Jesus seems unexpected, but it shouldn't have been. After all, more than once, Jesus had told them what to expect. While in the area of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked the disciples who they thought he was. It was Peter who answered correctly, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But then as Jesus continued to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer and be killed and on the third day be raised, 
Peter says, no way, Lord. After healing a demon-possessed boy, we're told, as they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And while they may have been distressed by his words, they still did not understand what he was implying. And prior to his entrance in Jerusalem, we're told, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him over to the Gentiles, and he'll be mocked and flogged and crucified, and he will be raised on the third day. Three times Jesus told them exactly what would take place. But still the disciples just didn't get it. Making his resurrection something they could not fathom. You see the women had come to complete the burial rites. Not to find a living Jesus. But boy were they surprised when they encountered the living Lord. And behold Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, go and tell, don't be afraid, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Now Jesus could have remained right there, soaking up their worship, basking in resurrection glory. But he sends them on a mission, go and tell. And again, each of the Gospels' accounts records the women going to the disciples, telling them what they experienced. Meanwhile, Jesus doesn't stay put. He goes. Luke tells us that he takes a walk with two of his disciples toward Emmaus, explaining all this that had taken place, revealing himself by blessing and breaking their bread, which Mark also alludes to in his account. Jesus didn't stay still. Women in the graveyard, check. Take a walk with a couple of my friends to a Roman garrison town, check. Back to Jerusalem to pop in on the disciples, who, by the way, were so startled by his appearance, he had to calm them down. Peace be with you, check. Jesus told the women to go and tell. And likewise, he went and did the same thing. Places to go people to see, things to do. So what about you? As we sit here in our Easter finery, families gathered, warm, fuzzy feelings all around, what about you? What are you going to do? Head home to someone's house and eat? Maybe hide some eggs for children of all ages? Watch some baseball? Catch the next round of the Masters tournament? It's a holiday. Most of us have to head back to work tomorrow. I get it. Okay, then what about tomorrow? Or the next week? Or the rest of your life? The command to go and tell was never meant exclusively for these women for that day to go to the disciples and no one else. And if you don't believe me, let's look at the rest of the testimony of the Holy Scriptures. Let's look to the end of Matthew 28 where it says... Now, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Mark writes about that first Easter saying, He appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. 
Luke records Jesus' appearance, writing, Then he opened his mind, their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And then finally, Jesus tells us that Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. You see, just as Jesus didn't rise from the grave, stand around with his hands in his pockets doing nothing, neither are we. The women who had come to finish burying their Lord discovered an angel sitting on the stone at the entrance to the tomb. You know, we're told that for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. So they're laying around there. And the angel addresses the women. He says, don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He's not here, for he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. And see, I have told you. And the women are heading off to go tell the disciples about their experience when they encounter Jesus himself, who does what? Tells them, keep on going. Keep on doing what you're off to do. And so the women go and tell the disciples what had happened. Meanwhile, Jesus leaves and he joins two of his disciples heading to Emmaus, reminding them of the testimony of the scriptures regarding his redemptive work. And also the guards eventually leave the area and they go and tell the chief priest what took place. No one stood still. No one remained quiet. Everyone went and told others what had taken place. And so should we. After all, isn't that what our mission statement for Augustana tells us? Disciples going and proclaiming the love of God in Christ Jesus. Today's epistle reading from Paul to that congregation at Colossae gives great guidance for living as God's resurrection people when he writes, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also appear with him. In glory. We do not live with a sense of dread nor of hopelessness because Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was raised for our salvation. By his Holy Spirit, he still lives and moves and breathes into his people faith and hope for all eternity. Because of Christ's resurrection, we have one who speaks in our defense Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We know that suffering and death terrorize the thoughts of many people in this world, but we also know what the Bible says as God with his word encourages and empowers us to believe that there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. In Jesus, we find our hope and our purpose. Even as St. Peter finally figured things out and told the early church, you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Go and tell, Jesus told the women. And they went, and they did. And in turn, the disciples, first gathered in an upper room with the door bolted out of fear of the religious types, were emboldened by their encounter with the risen Savior Jesus. 
And they received his sending to go and tell others who told others and who told others who eventually told us of God the Father and his love for us and his son, our Savior, Jesus. And now it's our turn. May our Easter joy today move us to share our joy tomorrow and all the days of our lives that others may know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. To him who sits on the throne and the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise and confess.